Now we are going to look at another logic family in which we use yet another kind of load. In this case, the load would be a PMOS transistor whose gate is grounded. Recall that for PMOS transistors, we use the same current equation as NMOS and the same inequalities. We just substitute for everything with the proper sign and for the inequalities, we reverse the sense of the inequalities. So the driver is still an NMOS transistor. The load in this case is a gate grounded PMOS transistor. This logic family is called the pseudo NMOS logic family because if you imagine a complex gate made using this architecture, it's going to consist of N NMOS transistors in the pull down network plus one PMOS transistor used for a load. So it is not exactly NMOS, but it is almost there. It is a pseudo NMOS uh, gate. So let's look at the pseudo NMOS uh, inverter and let's figure out V output high and V output low. So to find V output high, we use V input equals zero volt. And we have only one equation we can use, which is the KCL equation at the output node. So the load current is equal to the driver current. We only have to figure out the uh, regions of operation. So the driver is definitely going to be cut off in this case. And so we have an NMOS, uh, we have a PMOS whose gate is grounded and through which no current can flow because its, uh, its drain is open circuited. And we need to find out the output high in this case. Recall that for the PMOS, the lower uh, terminal is the drain, the higher potential is at the gate, is at the source. And recall that the PMOS will work when the gate to source potential is largely negative. So it works when the gate is actually at a low potential. So this PMOS is on. And if you're not, if you don't believe me that it is on, can create VGS. It's, it's equal to minus VDD, which is definitely less than V threshold P. It's not definitely less than V threshold P because it is negative, because V threshold P itself is a negative number. It is definitely less than V threshold P because it is largely negative. So this is definitely on. The question is, is this uh, PMOS transistor ohmic or saturated? And the, and the answer is it has to be ohmic. Why? Because if it is saturated, if it was saturated, then the current flowing through it with these terminal conditions can never be zero. And the PMOS saturation current is KP over 2 into VGS, which is minus VDD minus V threshold P all square. This is not zero. It's impossible for this to be zero. So it has to be ohmic and the ohmic current KP into VGS minus V threshold P. Recall that V threshold P is a negative number into VDS minus VDS square over two is equal to zero. This is solved by VDS equals zero, which causes V output to be equal to VDD, and this is V output high. So congratulations, we have V output high equal to VDD. So this is what we wanted and we got it, right? So now let's find the other uh, static point. When V input is equal to V output high is equal to VDD, the output is equal to V output low. So let's uh, write the current equation and try to figure out the regions of operation. The driver is definitely going to be ohmic because the output, which is the output low, is a low potential. The gate of the driver is a very high potential. This uh, NMOS device is, uh, has no chance of being saturated. Uh, the question is what's happening with the load? So the load is going to be saturated. You can actually either figure it out using the inequality or you can actually think about it logically because if the uh, output voltage, which is the drain for the PMOS for the load, is at a low potential, then that creates a large VSD across the channel of the PMOS. Recall when we talked about how saturation in NMOS and PMOS is actually kind of the same thing. It happens when there is a large lateral field across the channel. And so there is a large lateral field across the PMOS channel. If you're not sure about this, you can write the inequality and it will immediately tell you that the PMOS has to be saturated. So we simply write the, uh, the uh, equations here, the current equations. So for the NMOS, it's KD into VDD minus V threshold and V output low minus V output low square over two 
equal to the saturation current of the PMOS KL over 2 into uh, minus VDD minus V threshold P all square. So again, it's a quadratic equation in the output law. No, we saw this quadratic equation with uh, the RTL, enhancement load, and depletion mode families, and we are seeing it here again. So we will solve for the output law. We will get two values for the output law because this is a quadratic equation. And uh, one of them will be acceptable, the other will not be acceptable because it will either lie beyond the boundaries of ground and, and supply, or it will, be, uh, it will not cause the driver to be uh, ohmic and the load to be saturated. So let's sketch the VTC of this logic family, V output against V input. And again, we always want to sweep the regions of operation of MD and ML. And we always begin drawing the VTC by the two points that we know, because these two points give us information about regions of operation that then cause us to be able to connect the dots. So the two points we know is that when the input is zero volt, the output is VDD. And in this case, the driver is cut off and the load is ohmic. We also know that when the input is VDD, the output is some voltage V output low, and this voltage is non-zero, and so this point, VDD and V output low, is also on the VTC. And in this case, the driver is ohmic, and the load is saturated. As always, the driver is going to continue to be cut off until the input is equal to V threshold N, in which case the driver will turn on and thus the output will continue to be VDD until the driver turns on. Again, when the driver turns on, it will turn on in saturation because it will turn on in a condition in which its drain potential is, is at a very high voltage and its gate potential is at a very low voltage. So it turns on in saturation first. We know that it will stop being saturated and become ohmic eventually, and this happens when the curve intersects the line V output equals V input minus V threshold N. Because for the driver, the inequality for saturation is VDS, which is V output, is greater than VGS, which is V input minus V threshold N. So when does the load switch from ohmic to sat? Because that, this happens, the load starts in ohmic and ends up in sat. It's never going to be cut off because VGS is minus VDD, so it's always on. But the question is, when does it stop being ohmic and when does it start being saturated? And we can, we can find out by writing the inequality. So VDS for the load is V output minus VDD. And for saturation, VDS has to be less than VGS, which is minus VDD minus V threshold P. So this guy goes into saturation when V output is less than minus V threshold P. Don't be fooled into thinking that this is an impossible uh, condition because V threshold P is a negative number. So this is V out less than absolute value of V threshold P. So if you draw a line at absolute value V threshold P, which is generally going to be higher than V output low, and you draw a horizontal line like this, then as the VTC goes down and transitions, Whenever it intersects the straight line and goes below it, the load, the uh, PMOS load, will switch from ohmic to saturation. So the, the PMOS load actually spends most of its time in ohmic. On the other hand, the driver will switch from saturation to ohmic when it intersects the line V output equals V input minus V threshold. Now, using a PMOS, together with an NMOS is a very dangerous practice because if you look at an NMOS, it's created in a P substrate. Now, if we need to create a PMOS in the same chip as the NMOS, we need to create a body for the PMOS or for the other PMOSs that we use. This body is created usually in something called an N-well, and this is a large area with a light doping that is N-type, and we create the PMOSs within this N-well. 
Now there's a PN junction between uh, the N well and the substrate. This PN junction is uh, always reverse biased, thankfully, because the bodies of the uh, N mosses are always connected to ground and the bodies of the P mosses are always connected to supply. The problem is there is also a parasitic structure that, that exists because of this connection. And this parasitic structure exists between this N plus, let's imagine that this is a drain of an N moss, and this P, the body, and then this N of the well. So we have an NPN structure, an NPN structure. This creates a parasitic bipolar transistor. And this parasitic bipolar transistor can and will carry current under uh, transient situations. And this current, when it does flow, can be disastrous. It can be huge and it can be unregulated and it can burn the chip. This phenomenon is called latch up. And it happens whenever we create P mosses and N mosses in the same chip. It doesn't really matter if you have one P mos or 100 P mos or a million P mos. Actually, it matters a little bit, but the presence of a P mos in a chip opens it up to the uh, potential for latch up. We will talk more about latch up in modules uh, in module seven, uh, and we will also uh, talk about having taken the risk with latch up with pseudo NMOS, why not move to a circuit that uh, uses many PMOSs, which is CMOS, which we will talk about in module six.